All right, hello everyone, and thank you for tuning in once again to the Black Box Podcast, BBOR, Black Box Online Radio, coming to you from West Virginia. Today we're going back to the year 2008 to discuss the serial killer John Hughes, and I have to say that John Hughes is a very common name. It's like, um, I mean, all kinds of searches were just clouding the results. Of course, we have the famous movie director who gave us the Brad Pack films and Home Alone. But just even other murderers have also been kind of, you know, involved in the searches. John William Hughes was another killer from like the 1800s even. What I would say about John Hughes, the serial killer we're going to be talking about today, who was involved with some activity in 2008, is that I first found out about him because of a video being shared on Facebook. And it was a very small segment of a famous interview that he did. But the thing is, he said something very, very um, kind of obscure in it that I haven't particularly heard from too many serial killers. Uh, A little bit, but not too much, or at least not presented in the exact same way. And that was, and what I recalled at the time wasn't 100% verbatim, but the thing that I had recalled was that he was saying, every second there are a hundred thoughts going at once. He's thinking about a hundred things at once, and it was only when he would kill that there would be only one single thought. And that, I mean, that always just stood out to me. That always just, like, I'd never really heard anyone say something exactly like that. Of course, when I listened back to the larger interview again, it was, um, not, I didn't remember it exactly verbatim, but he does talk about having, like, a hundred thoughts going at the same time. The first thing I would say about something like that is that there is this um, idea out there called the hunter-farmer hypothesis, and that is sort of that... ADD is, you know, attention deficit disorder. ADD is a response to human evolution. Like, the brain is actually evolving as we speak. And people who have ADD are like, they're a part of, you know, just the evolution of neuroscience. And the the reason why ADD is in the mix is you're learning how to concentrate on multiple things at once. You're learning how to concentrate on two things at the same time, or maybe even three things at the same time. And even for people who don't have ADD... I mean, I don't have ADD, but I certainly can say that I've had, you know, like, ideas jumping around from one to the next and such. Maybe you have, too. But are there people like that who are going to be caught up with this, who are kind of going to be um, maybe evolving in a more destructive way? Because remember, with evolution, it branches out in like a web sort of, a web-like fashion. So that's the first thing that I would just say. Something that I noticed about that, and Tom Hartman has kind of written on the hunter-farmer hypothesis, if anyone would like to look up his stuff. When it comes to John Hughes, though, most people know him from his interview with KMBC that he did about nine years ago, and that was kind of just um, something that he put out there to look, well, I mean, to be honest, this kind of reminds me of some of the things that I don't like about learning about serial killers and true crime is people who are showboating, people who are just sunbathing in it. They're just gloating about the murders that they committed. They just love the attention. They love having the camera on them, the lights on them. And in all seriousness, it's just like, they're murderers. They killed people. And I know they're glad to be out of their cell or glad to be out of the traditional prison life. But it's just like, in in the interview that I was just referencing, he was really um, hyping up, you know, just his own life. And he's just... um, loves being the center of attention and he loves hearing himself talk and that's the once again those are just some of the things that i don't particularly like about true crime and serial killers what i think is much more fascinating is trying to comprehend the psychological motivations that drive people to kill but the um the channel alan zerdo 19 alan is spelled a-l-l-a-n alan zerdo 19 has the full interview out that is over um one hour and 12 minutes And um, I only say that because a lot of the other interviews that you'll watch on different channels are severely edited. But um, when it comes to John Hughes, he was, you know, involved with, uh, we don't even really know how many, how many crimes he committed. He was born in Mississippi and actually in the town of Oxford, but he's really serving life in prison for the killing of Valentin Kirilchuk, who was a... Ukrainian immigrant and a truck driver that he killed at an interstate truck stop and his girlfriend Dana Tudor was also charged in the death for second degree murder and one of the reasons why they killed him was they were um they stole his wallet which had about uh, two hundred dollars in it and um Dana was also charged in in this Dana Tudor his girlfriend and she was um also uh sentenced 
but it's like the thing is, um, John Hughes says very clearly that he takes full responsibility. If she didn't cooperate, he would have put a bullet in her head. He would have her murdered. So um, I was quite surprised about that. But what I would say is that um, we kind of got to look at the childhood of somebody like John Hughes. He describes spending lots of time alone by his own choice. He was born in, as we said, rural Mississippi. He's out in the woods. But he said even if he wasn't living in a rural area, he just would have spent time by himself. He would have gone out and he would have always wanted to kind of be in charge of things. And I think that this is really a case of antisocial behavior. We're not talking about narcissism and psychopathy, although they might be connected, but John Hughes really strikes me as just an antisocial personality. He is someone who kind of got used to creating his own dominance hierarchies. And one of the things that he was doing out there in the woods was abusing animals, one of the textbook signs of a serial killer, animal abuse. But then he would say, like, when he would be playing with his kind of siblings, he would always take the, uh, the games too far to the point of hurting them, and he didn't elaborate on detail. And when I would hear something like that, that just really tells me that this is the type of person who, once again, he just wants to be the power figure. He wants to kind of be kind of making his own rules so that he can dominate. Domination is a huge thing that goes on with serial killers that I don't think is talked about in, enough. A lot of people are trying to focus in on the things like these words like psychopath, but what about just dominance? They just want to be like the kind of most powerful person in the situation. Uh, some some channels and some um, some you know biographies really get into that, but I don't know if it's really explored enough. But that's the stuff that I really um, stood out to me about John Hughes, the antisocial personality who, no matter what situation he is in, he wants to be like the kind of most powerful figure. And I don't think that any of that was conscious to him when he was a kid, other than the fact that he kind of it was kind of a preference to him. But just the whole concept of how things could progressively get worse and worse. First, you spend time alone in the woods, which is a totally fine thing. Some people prefer to be alone. But then once you start abusing animals, and then once you start abusing your siblings, it's always trying to create that power dynamic that no one could push back against. And eventually, he grew up to become not only an antisocial personality, but also a murderer, a murderer rather, and um, it's like, I think that there were some definite, definitive telltale signs that he was going to commit these murders, but a lot of people um, overlooked them, and that just happens with everybody. And I'm on the website, kcarchives.com, that's the Kansas City Archives, and um, they had something to say about, uh, about John Hughes, and they said prior to the murder of Valentin Kirilchuk, Hughes stabbed a man in Zanesville, Ohio, named David Durbin. Hughes was apprehended in York County, Nebraska, after being pulled over for a DUI. In charging Hughes, Platte County Prosecutor Eric Zahn said in a statement, This defendant viciously murdered two people in two weeks. He stabbed his first victim to death, stole his gun, and then used that gun to kill another innocent man. For the safety of society, it is good that he will never live outside of the walls of prison again. Now, John Hughes is somebody who claims that he has murdered multiple people. He claims that he has murdered just like countless individuals, like up to 20 or something like that. But one of the things that they were saying about him on Reddit is that, and I didn't read the forum because like, I don't really like to get you know too caught up in some of the big discussions they're having on Reddit. I just saw the title of it in like the Google search box, and um, they just said, is this guy putting on an act? And I would say the answer is yes. Yes, I do believe he's putting on the act, because I believe, though, if he were in prison, if he's just sitting there going to be rotting in prison, he probably would have given away more information and details, and countless times people are rotting in prison, and they give away more details about the murders that they've committed to get a lesser sentence or to get some, some, some sort of reward, and they will even go with the authorities to the locations where they buried the bodies. This is done multiple times, and it's not only with serial killers. I was even recalling the case of one um, one episode that I'd seen about a um, a man who had just murdered his wife, and they never really knew that he uh, whether or not he had done it. And after he was convicted of the murder, even like you know, body in absentia, no habeas corpus, he shows them where the body is, and yes, indeed, he had done it. So it's like those things do happen, and I think that um, John Hughes would be proffering more information 
if he actually had it, and he wasn't just exaggerating the stuff, so once again he could kind of hear himself talk and be in the center of attention. Now it's like, um, when it comes to, to the method, you even got to look at some things. About committing multiple murders, the, the murder of Valentin Karilchuk happened in September of 2008, and that was when Hughes was kind of using a gun from that one. In the first murder, in the first murder that we said of David Durbin, he was using a knife. So it's like, you. I mean, I, th I think that's an important thing to say, because not all murderers use the same pattern. So it's just like, because we always kind of like um, want to look at what is the pattern, how is this person operating, and they say that serial killers like to stick to their pattern, but when people are committing crimes like this, you really got to wonder, it's just like, why don't they just ever just change the pattern because they want to? And I know that you're, we're only talking about two specific murders now, but it just seems so easy when you lay it out in the case of uh, John Hughes. Okay, so he first stabs the first victim, then he, that person has a gun on him, he steals the gun, and now he's using the gun in the future murder, in the next murder, rather. So, like, you can see very clearly that the pattern isn't everything, and we got to think about these people as human beings. They're conscious, living human beings as well, so, like, maybe they just want to change their method of execution. And um, I think that the reason I'm talking about this stuff is, with the Zodiac Killer, so much of what, you know, we, we've been talking about is, what are the, all the inconsistencies in the pattern that have gone on there? What about the inconsistencies in other, like, unsolved homicides and such that might be connected to one person? Well, maybe the perpetrator just changed the pattern because he want to, wanted to. Maybe he just changed it because it was more convenient. Or, which is in the case of John Hughes, he obtained the knife and he was able to um, well, commit the first murder. Then he obtained the handgun and was able to commit the second murder. But... Um, no matter what, whether or not John Hughes has murdered multiple people, he should never be let out of prison. Um, he seems like kind of just a disgusting individual, to be honest. And um, I think that it's just uh, very uh, kind of sad and unfortunate that all of these events happened. And bear in mind, he was also a new father at the time. He had a daughter, and he kind of just abandoned her and just, just kind of being a very selfish and ridiculous individual. So the thing is, though, it's like a lot of these things probably had some warning signs associated with childhood and development, antisocial personality, meaning against the social norm. John Hughes is the type of guy that says that, like, he is a lion among men. He says that he is the Antichrist, and he's probably really getting off on that and probably just feels like he's the king of the underworld or something when he's saying that he is the Antichrist. But you really see that it's probably not something that is actually the... Um, typical of an actual antichrist. He's probably just someone who spent time in the woods and uh, enjoyed the power that was associated from torturing animals that started pushing his siblings around and he enjoyed the power associated with that. So then slowly by slowly his events became more and more extreme as time would go by and this is just someone who's only creating scenarios in which he could dominate. When he was with his uh, girlfriend, Dana Tudor, he uh, had two other people in the backseat, and I believe they were also implicated in the crimes. But the first challenge question I would like to ask you guys is, do you believe that she should have been charged with second-degree murder if he had threatened her life, saying, if you don't do these things, then you will get a bullet in your head, meaning that he will kill her? If she was under the threat of that, do you think that she should be charged? We could have done a whole episode on Dana Tudor because of the simple reason that we've covered so many cases like this. The woman who is just distracting somebody while their boyfriend commits the murder. I mean, like, we've had multiple things like this, or the, the orchestrator of this in the case of Jennifer Mee. Annika Ersberg was the other one that we mentioned about the woman who's just distracting people while her boyfriend Bob committed the murders. Should Dana Tudor have been charged with second-degree murder if he had threatened her life and she knew that he was capable of murder? I mean, like, this stuff had gotten real and such. I mean, like, he had, he had, uh, he had really kind of gone past a breaking point. I mean, that's just a challenge question, and it's not like I have a pre-prepared response for that. I'm genuinely curious what other people would say about that. And if you do get a chance to watch any of the interviews with John Hughes or you've seen them before, I would really like to know what do you think about the acting thing. Do you think that he is putting on an act 
and um, he is trying to just um, kind of deceive people to get attention, and he didn't really, he's not some big glamorous serial killer. He is just someone who is um, talking out of his ass to get media attention, in other words. And one last thing that I would say is that um, someone described him as articulate and intelligent in one of the comments I saw. I think it was actually on Pinterest, and I was like, no way. I don't think he's articulate and, and intelligent. I think that's just something that he probably wants you to think. And he even says that he can learn all about someone by spending a minute with them. And during the KMBC interview, someone is interviewing him, and she's like, well, what do you think about me? And he's just kind of like, um, I haven't asked you any questions yet. Why? Because he didn't prepare his story. Well, that's all for me now. What do you think about the case of John Hughes? And I would love to hear your answers to the challenge questions that I brought forward. And if you have anything to say at all about serial killers or John Hughes, drop a comment below. And until next time...